what I want to do in this lesson is have a look at the ideological debates and the ideological struggles that took place within the mainly the Politburo when it comes to following the death of Lenin. So we're going to be exploring the characters and ideologies of each of the main players when it comes to the, the power struggle that took place between 1924 and 1929. So don't forget the power struggle. So power struggle uh, lasted a long time. We mentioned this in the last lesson. So the power struggle was a period of time that lasted from 1924 to 1929. So we have a long period of history that we're going to look at. And we're going to be taking a look at these seven individuals in um, individual order. Okay, so we're going to talk about Stalin, Trotsky, Tomsky, Bukharin, Kamenev, Rykov, and Zinovev. And fundamentally, there are some in this within this list that you know are less of a of a main player, of a, you know, a main individual. However, we're going to be talking about the main players as well, the likes of Stalin and Trotsky, for example. So we're going to begin with the eventual winner of this power struggle, Stalin. We're going to talk about Stalin's past, we're going to talk about his ideological beliefs and where he sort of sat within the within the Communist Party. So Stalin was born in Georgia in 1879 and he was uh, an agitator and a fundraiser within the Bolshevik Party. And this, this agitation within the Bolshevik Party did lead to him being sent to Serbia uh, many times as a result. And he joined the Bolsheviks at the very beginning, okay? And this is a very important thing. He was very loyal, so he was loyal to Lenin throughout throughout this period. From the whole period of 1903 to 1921, okay? And Lenin held Stalin within, you know, with high regard. Uh, Lenin ref referred to Stalin specifically as that wonderful Georgian, uh, in quotes, okay? And Lenin supported Stalin's promotion to the position of General Secretary in 1921. So we can see that Stalin's ideology was closely tied to that of Lenin's. So Stalin's, so Stalin's uh, ideology uh, was closely tied, closely tied to that of Lenin. However, while that whilst that's being said, whilst Stalin was loyal to Lenin through a very you know the majority of the period of revolution and the civil war, as well as it turns out, Stalin's positions in reality were more flip floppy. Okay, he was flip flop from different you know from supporting different things depending on whether or not. You know, it was um, politically advantageous to do so. And we're going to talk about that in the next lesson the way Stalin supported some things at some period of time and then other things at other period of time. And that, and now that played quite a key role in him becoming, um, you know, him beating out everybody else when it came to leader of the, of the Soviet Union. Trotsky, on the other hand, arguably, you know, the one second in line for for this for this position following the death of Lenin, Trotsky was born in 1883 and was uh, known for being a talented writer and orator. So orator, you know, generally a speaker, a talented speaker. He was the most famous member of the government, other than Lenin. So following Lenin, he was the most famous uh, member of the government, and. The problem with Trotsky was, despite being relatively popular with Lenin, he was very unpopular with the rest of the Communist Party. So it doesn't bode well that, you know, when Lenin died, he had no allies. So when Lenin dies, when Lenin uh, died, Trotsky had no allies. Or well, no significant numbers of allies. Trotsky had joined the Bolsheviks in 1917, promoting many to believe he, um, prompting sorry, many to believe that he was just simply seeking the power and not a true Leninist, and not a true Marxist-Leninist, um, not a true ideological communist. And he retained the position on the Politburo until 1927. However, his policies were unable to influence. He was unable to influence policy. Um, 
in his period of time on, up until 1927. And the power struggle between Stalin and Trotsky is something that we're going to talk about in a, another later lesson when we talk about the, the differences between the two and why you know Trotsky eventually was, let, was um, effectively chased out of the, the country. So we're going to go down here to Kamenev and Zinovev. So these two were less, um, uh, less we would argue, uh, prominent than that of Stalin and Trotsky. However, they still played a very prominent role in the power struggle. So Kamenev was a committed Bolshevik in 1905. So this is, you know, the 1905 revolution. So we mentioned 1905 revolution. This is something that's before... Uh, the before the course even this this course begins, but the 1905 revolution was partly due to the um, the Russo-Japanese War, and it led to the Tsar Nicholas declaring the October Manifesto and creating a state, the State Duma, the thing that we talked about when we talked about the revolution. So he was a committed Bolshevik all the way back in the 1905. Uh, so you know earlier than the revolution. And he was initially close to Lenin, uh, to Lenin, uh, but did oppose the April Thesis of 1917. If we remember, the April Thesis was was Lenin's um, Lenin's declaration, shall we say? And in 1922, he formed uh, a triumvirate <laughs> with uh, with Z Zinoviev and Lenin. So basically, a a um, uh, a group, effectively a group with a group with Lenin and Zinoviev, and this was to prevent Trotsky from becoming too powerful. Okay, so the 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 purpose of this of this of this um, of this sort of um, you know three way um, group three way grouping between um, Stalin, Kamenev, and uh, Zinoviev was not to try and gain power in any way, but to prevent Trotsky from gaining power. Okay, so this was an attack on Trotsky, an attack. Attack on Trotsky. Moving on to uh, Zinoviev as well, um, he again was a close friend of Lenin and arguably a true quote Leninist. Um, he had supported the Bolshevik movement from um, the very beginning, and again he um, you know formed this group, um, which eventually began to form a majority at the Politburo. So this meant that they had uh, quite a lot of um, so we had uh, a lot of influence, a lot of influence within this, a lot of influence within this group, and again, in an effort to ensure that Trotsky would not become the new leader, he made a number of speeches outlining the differences between uh, Lenin and Trotsky. So these two really were out against Trotsky. So these two were really against Trotsky. Uh, Trotsky. In their in their in their convictions in their ambitions to um, first you know in within the leadership struggle as a whole, so this is one of the reasons why Trotsky was very unsuccessful in becoming leader of the party. He was not very popular within the Communist Party, and these two were a very good example of why um, of how Trotsky was uh, viewed within within the Communist Party. So moving on, finally, we've got three um, arguably less significant in the terms of the power struggle. However, still very important to talk about. So we've got Tomsky, not to be um, misconstrued with Trotsky. Tomsky was born in 1880 and had a background within the trade union movement. Okay, oops, that's a terrible uh, line. Within the trade union movement. He was the chairman of the Central Council of Trade Unions in 1918. Okay. However, despite being, you know, arguably a true uh, leftist, uh, you know, being a very being um, at the chair of the trade unions council, he often clashed with Lenin over the role which trade unions should play in society. So this is these are just ideological differences. So ideologically different to Lenin. So ideological. Ideologically uh, different to Lenin. To Lenin. And 
this is one of the reasons why, arguably, people would uh, were against the idea of Tomsky um, taking control and having any kind of power because of his ideological differences with Lenin, especially with relations to trade unions. Next, we've got Bukharin, who was born in 1888, and from 1925 to 1928, he was arguably the most prominent figure within the Soviet government. So he, so he had, you know, come out on top as, as, as a relative front, as a. Oh, let me try and get these lines to work. It's not letting me do it. There we go. As a relative front runner. As a relative front runner. In terms of being the most prominent figure within Soviet government. And again, he was a true Leninist. He joined the Bolshevik Party back in 1906. So he was a dedicated, so he was dedicated Leninist. As well as this, he continued to support Lenin to his until Lenin's death. And Lenin trusted Bukharin for a number of important tasks, including the editor of Pravda, Soviet newspaper. So this is a the Soviet newspaper. Soviet newspaper and despite you know being trusted by Lenin it is known that him and Lenin would disagree on a number of issues again some minor ideological issues including things like ending the first world war and the introduction of the NEP don't forget the uh, new economic plan was a uh, very uh, controversial So that should be noted that it was quite a controversial policy and arguably if you notice that there's a common theme that is um, being strung through all of these characters and this common theme is the relationship with Lenin so relationship let me come, go zoom in a bit more relationship relationship with Lenin arguably the ideological similarities between Lenin and whoever was become the leader next was something that was very important, which is why you could argue that you know Stalin took took the power partly because of his ability to flip flop on lots of different ideological policies when it if and when it suited him, but he also was seen by Lenin as an ad ideological ally, generally speaking, and. Obviously, Lenin didn't want, you know, Lenin was very critical of all of these um, characters when he, um, when he, before he died. Okay, we talked about that in the last lesson. He was very critical of the of the a number of different things that um, each of these characters, um, each of these characters uh, possessed, a number of all their qualities. So finally, the last person we're going to talk about is Rykov, and Rykov has very little to be said, effectively. Um, so he was born into a peasant family in 1881 and he was elected to succeed Lenin as the chairman of the uh, Sovnarkom okay, and PM of the USSR. Okay, So these are, you know, um, uh, uh, important positions. Important positions within government, within the Soviet government. So it shows... Lenin trusted him to um, do these jobs. He also, again, talking about the ideological differences, he supported the NEP. So, supported Lenin's NEP. Supported Lenin's NEP. Which is significant, of course. So, all of these characters have um, different backgrounds. They have different um, positions within government they have different um, you know modes of experience within within government and running and being part of the communist party they also have very different ideological um, bents when it comes to um, their relationship with Lenin a lot of them were ideologically opposed to Lenin and some are, or at least certain issues of, of, of Lenin specifically things like the first world war the NEP and the uh, April thesis However, they were also all um, sorry. Uh, when it comes to the 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 person who eventually came out on top, um, Joseph Stalin, we find, and we'll talk about it in the next lesson in a lot of detail, the way in which he was able to to 
to use his idea effectively use his ideological beliefs to kind of flip flop on a different a number of ideas um if and when it suited him and when it was supported when he got support for uh, different policies which is very interesting and that's why we're going to talk about in the next lesson when we talk about so we've talked about Lenin's death we've talked about the ideological debates and all of these uh, different characters um, sort of setting the scene and in the next lesson we're going to talk about why it was Stalin who came out on top of all of these other characters.